I will admit that I never knew the name Connie Nicholas, now Connie Carberg, before this week. But she is a treasured piece of the NFL's history. In 1976, 1976, 40 years ago, she became the league's first and only female scout. And she's got a book out called X's and O's Don't Mean I Love You. Discover the untold story of the NFL's first female scout. And through her publisher and with the work of producer Tom, we had an opportunity to catch up with her on Wednesday. And it was such a neat 15 minutes that I got to spend with her and hear her story. And so I'm really excited to share that with you. Again, at the time, she was Connie Nicholas. And then when she got married, Connie Carberg, that's the name that she is now and is using to to promote her book. And I started out by asking her about her time with her beloved team, the New York Jets. Connie, you said you were with the Jets for a couple of weeks uh, and you had a chance to spend time with them in training camp uh, just this month. What did you do while you were with them? Um, I, I, I make it a habit every single, even though I left the Jets back up in 81, since then I st- spent two weeks every year. I go up in the summer, I have a very understanding husband, and I go up every year to watch practice, make sure that, see, because they always have a turnover and make sure I knew all the players. Uh, they still welcome me as family all through the years, so I get to be you know, family near the field and watch everything, get to know all the guys, scout them all still, still get that interest that I've always had and spend a lot of time with the players, reporters, coaches, everything. What do you miss about being involved with a team and working with a team like the Jets? Oh, man, so many things. Number one, draft day. <laughs> Probably the, the greatest day that, you know, that there ever could be, is draft day itself. Um, just being around um, – Everybody in in football, because I, I, I would say people in football are just a wonderful bunch of people that I've met. Um, whether it's the players, whether it's the coaches, the training staff, um, just everybody that I, all the people that I worked with. I had a great group when I was out there. I'm um, working at Hofstra uh, with the Jets, so I miss all of that. I thought it was really interesting, Connie, as I was reading your bio. And you talk about how you didn't get a lot of resistance, even though you were the NFL's only female scout. Other than the new Jets owner, when he came on board, he was a little uncomfortable with you traveling as a scout and representing the team. But you defend him and say, hey, this was 35 years ago. So if that's the case, I'm comparing it to my own experience. All I do is talk about sports for a living, and I still get plenty of resistance. So what was it like for you to be the only female in a world of scouting and in a completely male dominated industry yeah it was was really funny as i said i think part of the time is you know i grew up around the jets which really i think was a help and secondly i saw my confidence level in that was that was where my confidence level was was talking football so um and just being around all these different people and whether it was walt michaels and then coming from woody hayes at ohio state i just felt very comfortable around and uh in turn um they all treated me with the utmost respect. Um, as I said, it was only um, Mr. Hess, and I did understand where he was coming from, an older older gentleman taking over. And back in those days, as you can see, they really haven't had women scouts till 40 years later. So it, it was something that was brand new and where you might not feel comfortable, but they still allowed me to do a lot of the other things as far as grading films looking at things locally, interviewing the players when they came in for pre-draft physicals because they didn't have the combine at that time. So I was still able to do a lot of things, and no matter what, working for the Jets was still the answer to my life. (laughs) Connie, I don't know many people who would say that, and yet you're so proud of that. I really appreciate it. Uh, You say in your book that when you first started scouting, there was no film. So how did you do it? How did you get to know the potential for these players? They had well. They had reel to reel, so you know the reel to reel eight millimeter, but it was scarce. So when you you would get some stuff, but mostly from major schools, and it would be sent in from a school. And Jim Pons, who was the film man, would have it there, and he might he would give it to you to look at. But then of course it would have to go on to another team. So you would so it wasn't the type of thing where you could could get it with the computers or YouTube or look at different things or and find players and look at everything up close. It was you know a whole different world back then. So you had to do your best. Um, 
to look at things. When I, in fact, when I was there, boy, University of Pittsburgh, the, 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 that year was the Mark May, Tony Dorsett. I mean, they were just loaded. Uh, Kavanaugh, those couple of years, they were loaded with players. So you wanted to look at their films forever. We're spending a few minutes with the incomparable Connie Carberg, but at the time that she was the NFL's only female scout, she was Connie Nicholas, and she's got a book out now that tells her story, X's and O's Don't Mean I Love You. Connie, it's been amazing to spend a couple of minutes and and get to know your background. Here we are now decades later. You got your job in 1976, and while there have been a couple of female coaches here or there, uh, some women who have popped up in quality control, does it surprise you that even at this point in 2017, there aren't more women that have infiltrated this world as scouts or, or other positions in football? Yeah, well, you know, it took a while. It's funny. It really grew. The part all grew on the administrative side and also, you know, whether it's PR, whether it's tra- in the training section, all those, that section, even the women in assistant GMs, all that part, you saw great growth, uh, sideline reporters and, you know, all that. But the part actually in the football part with coaching and scouting, yeah, it did surprise more, more on the uh, scouting part than on the coaching. Coaching, I understood. Could be a little bit harder, uh, especially in the pros. You know, um, maybe if you started in high school and college, and the guys were a little bit more accepting, got used to it. But to jump right into the pros was going to be a little bit tougher. But scouting. But now that they have uh, women playing actual tackle football, and or even flag, and really understand this, that's a real advantage. That, you know, we had nothing like that back then. There weren't even uh, college scholarships for women when I was in high school. So it was a very big deal. So, now, so that's why it's, I think it took a long time. And right now, you know, right now it seems to be, from what I can see, there's a, there's a huge amount. The Jets have three uh, interns that are in the scouting part and one in the coach. So I think this year seems to be the year of the woman breaking through, 40 years later. Well, do they know who you are? Obviously, the Jets organization knows who you are. You're a major piece of their history. But I have to admit, I'm almost ashamed to admit this, Connie. I had not heard your name before this week, even though I've been in the sports business for 20 years. So in the football world, do people know who you are and, and what you accomplished? When the Jets made my – when they named me a scout with Al Ward and my colleague, it wasn't made into these big headlines. It just said, Connie, would you like to do scouting? And – Dick Young, who was a very famous columnist, you know, nicknamed me the Girl Scout, and a few other people, and Walt Michaels knew, and and I did that then. But it wasn't that they made these big headlines because it wasn't, as I said, a, a very big thing. And then there was nobody else other than Linda Bogdan from the Buffalo Bills for a short time um, after after myself, and then she did a lot of other things. Ralph Wilson's daughter, and other than that, there has not been anybody after that. So, but. And so, you know, once I left the Jets after I got married in 81 and moved to Florida, then it just kind of everything went by the wayside because there were no other women. But people up there at the Jets knew because of Mark Astineau. Mm. And, you know, Mark was always one that had touted the fact that I was the one that did help draft him and brought him up from being a you know, sixth-round or seventh-round pickup to where he was. In fact, he invited me up to the Ring of Honor because he said, you know, you, you scouted me. Um, I need you to come up for that. And so I, I was very honored as it was. So it wasn't, as I said, it wasn't the type of thing where, you, you know, it was really put out front. And um, the only th- we did this because about five or six years ago, my son said, Mom, I, I want to make a website because I really want to make sure that, that this doesn't get lost in history. Ah, that's wonderful, Connie. Well, I'm really glad that he encouraged you to tell your story. Have you enjoyed this process? Very much so. You know, it's really, it's been a labor of love, and it's it's been over four years in doing it and making sure we got in touch with all the different people, some that, you know, that have, some have passed on, but I was able to get in touch with quite a few of the people that are still alive and, and players and stuff, and everybody's just been so great about contributing to it. And I wanted to I wanted a, you know, a kind of a book that was inspirational for young girls, for football fans, for Jet fans, something positive about football because so, there's so much negativity right now about it. That's a great point, and this certainly does accomplish the goal. Connie Carberg, formerly Connie Nicholas, was the first female scout in the NFL back in the 1970s, and her book is called X's and O's Don't Mean I Love You, and she is joining us here after hours with Amy Lawrence. 
I love the part of your story in which you talk about Mark Gastineau and the fact that he was your responsibility. He was your find. Your boss said, get me a defensive lineman, and you went out and you found one. What did you see in him that stood out that was so special? Whatever we had, I looked at that. If I had any kind of tapes and I was trying to figure it out, one thing we did have, he had his speed was far, faster than anybody else, but I narrowed it down to about five guys that were fairly close in their write-up, strong points, weak points, summaries about the different things. But he was from a very small school, East Central Oklahoma. So at that time, you're looking at that and saying, well, not too sure. But I, call, I then proceeded to call them all on the phone because I had to make a decision pretty quickly for the North squad. And I called them all on the phone. Most of them that I called were like, okay, maybe, I'll, maybe I'm ready. Uh, I don't know. Tell me what I have to do to be in the Senior Bowl. Uh, when is it? That type of stuff. When I called this one person, he said, I'm on the next plane. I'm ready to play. I'm in shape. I can do it. Just let me know what I have to be. His enthusiasm, his passion, which I've always loved, just came through. And then I looked again, and his speed on top of that was better than everybody else's in either 4.55 or 4.6. I forget what, for a big, huge defensive lineman. And you, even if you're at a small school, it's a great speed. And so that you can't take away. So I called my boss, and I said, this is who we want to go with. And I, then he proceeded to go down to the senior bowl. Um, and as the Jet Scout Dan Sikanovich said, he just tore them up in, uh, in practices, and he got the MVP uh, on the defensive squad for the North squad. Marty Lyons got it for the South squad, and they, we ended up drafting Marty number one and Mark number two. And in 1984, Mark Gastineau had 22 sacks in a single season, which at that time was a league record. So, Connie, you were also part of the Jets when they won – Super Bowl three. What do you remember about that championship run? It was so wonderful to be to be a part all my life in high school. The Jets, you know, were not winners, and people used to say, "Oh, the Giants." That's why I despise the Giants. Um, all my life, the Jets were second class citizens to the Giants, and so when the Jets won the Super Bowl, uh, was unbelievable, and I was there and be a part of it, and and everything was so exciting. And, and then after that. They played the Giants in the Yale Bowl, and even Joe Namath said that was even more meaningful because that doubly meant we owned New York completely. And Ali Sherman got fired over it, but it was so exciting uh, to then being a high school senior. And then the Jets came out. They had a basketball team in the off season, and they came out to the they came out to the house for the party afterwards. And it was you know just a great way to grow up. Let me tell you, what an awesome memory for you and your family, Connie. Uh, We talked about how different things are now. There was no film when you started scouting, and uh, I used to have players over to your house. (laughs) But uh, there was also no social media, and that's something that's really changed the way that fans and players interact. And We're in the age of all access. When you would interview potential Jets draft picks or potential players that they might sign, how did you judge character without the benefit of the Internet? So Joe Namath obviously played before there was a camera in his face or camera phone all the time to record his every move. Uh, He was a bit of a playboy, but there was only so much that people knew about him. It's so different in 2017. So how would you judge whether or not a player might have off-field issues that would make him unworthy of a Jets draft pick? When you, if you went to the school, a lot of times the trainers, uh, if, if you were close to the head coach, you might get something. And if, when you talk, if, you were, if you were allowed, some schools are very tight, some are very loose with, with scouts, you might be able to talk to the player, otherwise trainers. And then when they did bring them in uh, for pre-draft physicals, uh, they had an interview, just like they're doing now in the combine. And that's about the only way. But, boy, what a different world. There's no question, because back in those days, you know, everybody thinks, oh, my gosh, what the players can do now. And as Joe did say, if, if social media was around back when he was playing, he would have to have changed his life quite a bit. <laughs> no doubt that is the case. It's probably better left unsaid and and not on camera. Uh, Connie Carberg was the NFL's first female scout in the late 70s. When you look at the NFL now, what's the biggest change from then to 2017, Connie? Wow. In the NFL now, just just how, you know, how, how big it is. You know, I mean, just, uh, of course, fantasy, fantasy football, number one, which I can't, I still have a hard time getting into because I can never 
I never put another player on my root for another player from another team, so I just can't do it. But just uh, it's how it's grown, but still scouting is still an inexact science with all uh, with all the different things that they have at you know with the workouts, the extra um, forty dash time pro days that they have, the extra time three months that they have. Um, you you have so many more films. Um, to study everything else and still how easy it is to get things wrong. And especially with the spread offense, it's really hard, hard to judge quarterbacks. So no matter what, that still is a thing. It's still an inexact science in scouting. That is so true. Uh, There's only so much that you can judge on film, even with all the technology and the access that we have now. You never know how a player is actually going to make that transition from college to the pros. Connie Carberg, formerly Connie Nicholas, the NFL's first female scout in the late 70s, has a brand new book. It's called X's and O's Don't Mean I Love You. I am so, so thankful that we had a chance to hear your story. I appreciate it. I hope that you'll come and talk to us again here on CBS Sports Radio. Oh, thank, Amy, it sounds great. I love talking to you because you you're full of enthusiasm, too. I love it, Amy. Thank you.